Hey everyone, AJ Stockwell here, licensed CPA and small business accounting and finance expert, here to tell you all about accounting, bookkeeping, small business finance, and everything in between. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. There should be a little red icon in the bottom right, whichever side that is of this video, and then a big red button underneath the video that says subscribe on it. And if you click that, and then if you click the bell that pops up next to it, you'll never miss a video. So in the last video, I talked to you about different job positions that there are in public accounting firms or CPA firms. So when someone is working for an accounting firm, what do the different roles, what does the hierarchy usually look like there? And in this video, I'm going to talk about the different roles that accountants play on an accounting team at a company. So rather than in public accounting serving multiple clients, if you're just working for one company, what are the different accounting positions there? So the first one that I'm gonna talk about is a bookkeeper or an accounting clerk. So these terms can often be interchangeable and at bigger companies, you'll hear the term accounting clerk, which usually means it's a bookkeeper that's focused on one aspect of the accounting process. So you might have an accounts payable clerk or an accounts receivable clerk or a payroll clerk, and that person is responsible for recording transactions for one aspect of the business. So this is really the person who's doing most of the heavy lifting in terms of the day-to-day -day recording of transactions. And in a smaller company, they might just use the term bookkeeper because the person handles all aspects of accounting. So a bookkeeper at a smaller business might handle accounts receivable, accounts payable, uh, posting cash transactions, etc. The next position is going to be the staff accountant or the accountant. And this person usually has an accounting degree. It's a pretty common position for people to take right out of college when they finish up their accounting degree. And this person does a lot of the same work that an accounting clerk might, but they might have a little bit higher of a level of responsibility. They might be handling some of the more technical month-end processes, such as bank reconciliations and month-end journal entries. They might be doing things like keeping track of fixed assets and depreciation. And then if the company is big enough, they might have accounting managers. So that's the next position that I'm gonna talk about. And an accounting manager is a more senior accountant who oversees a team of staff accountants or accounting clerks. So they might oversee one specific aspect of the accounting process. So you might have an accounts payable manager and they're overseeing the team of accountants or accounting clerks that are entering the payables, but they're not necessarily entering those payables themselves. However, this person does need to be keeping track of what the company owes and when the company's bills are coming due. And then they're going to be reporting to either the controller or the CFO or the owner of the business, uh, letting them know what is coming due. So the accounting manager position really is an important position, not just the accounts payable manager, but any accounting manager, because they're really providing important information that goes into cash flow planning. So the accounts payable manager will be letting the CFO or controller know what bills are coming due, and that helps that person plan for that cash flow. The accounts receivable manager is going to be keeping track of what the customers owe, so they're going to be reporting to the controller, the CFO, or the owner based on what we're expecting to receive in for cash, or when customers aren't paying on time and maybe something needs to be adjusted there. So what I've always really liked about accounting is that even in the positions outside of the executive level, there's still a really big impact that accountants have on the company. The next role that I'm gonna talk about is the controller. And the controller is really the person who is responsible for overseeing all aspects of accounting. So they are responsible for making sure that the monthly closing process gets done on time, which I'm gonna make a video about pretty soon here. And then they're responsible for putting together financial statements that can be reported either to the CFO or to the owners of the business. And if a company goes through an annual financial statement audit, then the controller is usually the one who's responsible for interfacing with the auditors the most, getting the auditors the information that they request. 
And then at the top of the accounting and finance departments, you have the CFO. So the chief financial officer is responsible not just for accounting, but all other aspects of finance. So financial analysis and forecasting are part of it, but also looking at the opportunities of investing the company's money into different investment opportunities. In big companies that separate accounting, finance, treasury, and tax, the CFO is usually the person who's ultimately responsible for all of those functions. In the past, CFOs often came from the big accounting firms, and they had a lot of hardcore auditing experience usually, and maybe an MBA degree, but today it seems like more and more CFOs are coming from growing through companies that they join. I think part of that is because people are leaving the big public accounting firms sooner than they used to be, or at least that's the way it seems, and a lot more people are foregoing getting an MBA because they want to go straight into their career and continue through their career without taking time off. So those are the main positions within the accounting department specifically, but there's also a couple of other areas that I wanna to touch on. So one is treasury. And I mentioned it a little bit earlier when I said that CFOs are ultimately responsible for the treasury department. And treasury usually refers to cash management and how a company is handling its cash, how its cash is invested or where it's saved. So the, the treasury department is the one who has the relationships with the company's bankers. They're really monitoring cash flow and making sure that if a company has excess cash, it's put into somewhere where it's safe but can still be making a little bit of money. And then the other department would be the tax department. So large companies often have their own in-house tax department, and that's another opportunity for accountants to be working in a company. The person at the top of the tax department usually has the title of tax director and will be reporting to the CFO. And this is usually someone who has a lot of public accounting experience working in tax. So the tax department doesn't usually actually prepare the company's annual income tax returns, but they might handle some items in-house, such as sales tax or property tax. And then the last point that I wanna to touch on is having a CPA license while working in private industry. And a lot of people ask me if this is necessary, if it's important to have your CPA if you wanna work in private industry. And the answer is not necessarily. And that's because you don't really need a CPA license unless you want to do a couple of the specific tasks that CPAs are empowered to do, like signing off on audited financial statements or signing income tax returns and representing clients before various tax authorities. However, a lot of companies see the value in the rigorous education and work experience and exam requirements for getting a CPA license. So it's a really valuable mark of credibility and someone's experience and knowledge. And that's why a lot of companies do look for people who have their CPA license. So these are the various roles that you'll see in the accounting department in a company. These can really vary depending on the size of a company. A really small business might only have one bookkeeper or they might be outsourcing their bookkeeping to an independent bookkeeper or an accounting firm that handles bookkeeping for clients. Or the biggest companies will have all of these levels and maybe more in between, as well as their own tax department. If you thought this video was helpful, please hit the like button, it's that thumbs up below here. And then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments what you thought about this video and if there's anything that you'd like to hear me talk about.